Oh, guys, with a season premiere like that, this only proves that this season of Doctor Who is going to be epic as hell. Hey, guys, it's Kevin again, and wow, what a episode. Seriously, what an episode. I can't believe this is only the premiere of the series. It feels like the series, it felt like a series season finale. That's really what it felt like, but it's only the premiere. And this is my review for the season premiere of Doctor Who, Series 9, Episode 1, The Magician's Apprentice. And holy shit, what an episode. I think this is just trying to show that they're trying to change things up. I know people are like, well, why'd they do this in the season premiere? To me, this feels like this is going to be a season where this entire show changes. They're going to go from, you know, let's go here in the TARDIS, let's go here, to something a lot more serious. And it really seems like that's where we're headed with this episode, because what an episode this was... Let's just get into it. It was really crazy, and I can't wait for next week's episode. It's going to be amazing. So we start off, uh, it kind of throws you off, because it's like, is this Doctor Who, or is this like Game of Thrones? I mean, the setting we were in was very interesting. We open on this battlefield, um, and we see there's this mix of weaponry being used, and two men are speaking to each other. One believes that they saw a child running in the fog, and the man, Kanzo, catches up to the boy, ignoring his friend's warning of incoming enemies, and the ground ripples under the boy, and Kanzo tells him to stand still and scans the air with a device, and the boy is on a hand mine, and Kanzo tells him to stand still. They look down, and there's a hand sticking out of the ground, grabbing Kanzo's ankle, and the hand then pulls Kanzo into the ground. Several more hands with eyes in their palm rise up and look at the boy, he calls for help, and a sonic screwdriver falls on his feet, which we know, of course, that means the doctor is there, and the doctor tells him to pick it up. What I love about the scene is that we don't know why the doctor is here. We just know that the doctor landed here, and we don't know why. And the doctor asks the boy what war or planet they're in, or but the boy on, but the boy is just confused. He doesn't know what the hell's going on here, and he tells the boy to choose to survive, and the boy has one chance in a thousand to survive. And the doctor tells him to focus on the one. The doctor asks the boy's name. And the boy tells him that his name is Davros. And I, that was incredible when we saw that. Because I haven't seen, um, you guys know this is the only series I've seen of Doctor Who. I haven't seen the previous series. Well, I've seen C series eight. But this is the only Doctor I've seen. I've seen some episodes of Matt Smith. But I've never seen an episode with Davros, and I'm very happy that they brought Davros back, because if you guys don't know, next to the Master, the D Davros is the Doctor's greatest arch enemy. so I can't wait to see. I was definitely very into that. I looked up right away who the hell is Davros, because I knew he was important, because the way the Doctor looked, and I was like, okay, this is going to be amazing. So we then see this seedy establishment full of many alien races, and a cloaked figure hovers into the bar looking for the Doctor, and the figure appears at the Shadow Proclamation asking after the Doctor, and the Shadow Architect says she doesn't know, but inquires to know what Davros wants with the Doctor, and the figure simply leaves. And the figure can't quite catch his name, and the basically... The figure arrives on Karn and asks Ohelia about the Doctor, and he leaves a message for the Doctor with Ohelia, telling her that Davros is dying. And that I thought was really interesting that we know that Davros is dying. So this is probably going to be maybe the final time we see Davros. Uh, this series is when the last time we're going to see him, and that's going to be very interesting if that happens. And Davros remembers, and that the f Doctor must face Davros one last time, and after the figure leaves, Ohelia turns to the Doctor hiding behind a stone and asks what he's done, and Davros is barely awake. He tells the figure that he's anticipating, and Davros tells the figure that if he seeks the doctor, he should first seek his friends, and we know, obviously, he's talking about Clara, and that's obviously a problem, but I love seeing that Davros is after the doctor right away. Just, that's his mission. He wants to go after the doctor, and it just, it made me, like, so hyped for this episode. So we see that Clara is teaching a class like she usually does, and she just can't catch a break, seriously. Clara is a character that we have to feel the worst for, and it's kind of sad to see Clara, because we know that this is going to be Jenna Coleman's last series um, in the show, which I predicted that that was going to happen, because it was supposed to happen in Series 8 anyway. Um, but I'm fine that she's still here, because I think they're going to you know, give her a really, really good exit. Um, I don't know if this is her final episode, but... I definitely feel they're going to give her a really good exit, and she's teaching a class, she looks out a window, and something catches her eye. She draws something on the window, uh, excuse me one second, 
Basically, she draws something on the uh, on the window and tells her students to open their phones. And she's noticed the plane that's frozen in place in the sky, and she's summoned by the unit, obviously by the military. That and we haven't seen them since the finale. Um, that's the last time we saw them. And she's greeted by Kate. If you remember the uh, the you know Kate, she was from the unit. It was cool to see her again. She and another agent fill in Clara on the details, and they're unable to contact the pilots of the planes because they're actually frozen in time. So they have no idea what's going on. They know that Clara is probably going to be able to help them out here. And basically, she pieces together that someone's trying to get their attention, and Unit gets a message on the doctor's channel, the one that he never uses. And all it says is, it first says, you so fine, you so fine, you blow my mind. And then it says, hey, Missy. So yes, Missy is back. She's not dead. And she makes the arrangement to have Clara brought to her. And that was awesome. I have to say, Missy stole the show so many times this episode. What I love about Missy is that despite how maniacal she was in Series 8, she's so funny. I mean, I was laughing so much throughout this episode. Can you please make her a main character? Like, seriously, after this episode, they need to make Missy a main character because she was so funny. And even when she was doing the most, you know, even when she's done all these terrible things, she's great. And that's why I'm very happy that they brought her back because she was so funny. And she was really great in this episode. So she sits in an outdoor cafe, and the unit snipers are put into place around her because they don't know what she's up to. They don't really know what she wants, um, why she's there. They just don't trust her, obviously. Because the last time, of course, all those Daleks and things happened. So a car with two agents drives up with Clara in the back seat, and Clara then joins Missy at her table, and Missy brings up Danny, who, of course, you know, is dead, and she then shows off that she has control of the planes, allowing one to move just a bit before freezing it again, and she presents Clara with a confession dial, and basically, this is probably going to be one of the most important things about, you know, this particular series, and she says the last will and testament of the Doctor to be presented on the eye of his final day. So Clara tries to take it, but it shocks her, and Missy says it was given to her, and Missy says that she's the Doctor's friend, where Clara is more like a pet, and I kind of understand that because Clara's not like Missy and the Doctor. They're both very powerful, while Clara's really not. Clara is a very, you know, I think calculated person. She's very smart, but she's not powerful like the Doctor and Missy are. Although Clara can get her hands dirty like we saw last series where, you know, she talks shit about the Doctor and almost left him. I mean, she can be powerful, but I, I do agree with Missy that definitely Clara's not as strong as those two are. So, she says she and the Doctor have a friendship going back further than human civilization, and Clara asks if she's supposed to believe Missy has turned good, and Missy kills, and she's like, oh, no, 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 I have not turned good. She kills two agents at once. It was actually pretty funny that she just randomly killed them, and she orders Clara to say something nice or she'll kill everyone in the square, and Clara tells her to let the planes go to prove that she actually cares about her best friend, and Missy lets the planes free, and Clara asks about what the confession says, and Missy says, we'll only open once the Doctor is dead. So I'm pretty sure we're going to get to, like, the Doctor's probably going to die this season. He's not, he's going to die, but he, he probably, he definitely is going to come back. But I think definitely something's going to happen where the Doctor either almost dies or something happens. He's going to be forced to release this confession. We just don't really know what it is yet. Um, and if the Doctor only has one day left to live, they're sure that he's going to come to Earth. But the question is where and when, and they use an algorithm theorem to track him down. And Clara asks Missy how a Time Lord's supposed to die, and Missy says in meditation and contemplation, and she figures that the Doctor would do just do the opposite and tell them to change the algorithm. And they pinpoint the Doctor, and Missy teleports her and Clara away. And they arrive in this medieval area, basically where the Doctor was. And... I thought that was very well done. I love seeing Missy go on this mission with Clara. You know, even though she's done these things to them, she has to help her because obviously she's as close with the Doctor as Clara is and cares just as much about the Doctor that Clara does. So, we see this burly man on the arena floor challenges a magician to face him, and the Doctor then rolls into the arena on top of a tank playing an electric guitar. What an awesome scene. I mean, seriously, the Doctor in this scene went from being this really serious old man to a badass. I mean, he was a badass in this scene. And the Doctor, and basically, you can see how much the Doctor has changed. Like, from this time, he has changed, and he's a very different kind of person. This was very interesting to watch. And Peter Capaldi, I mean, this is probably his best performance I've seen from him on the show. 
So, the doctor makes anachronistic jokes to the crowd and seems to notice Clara and Missy hiding in the parapets. And the man with the axe points out that the doctor has been hiding there for three weeks and... I thought it was really funny that he reveals in the ways he's messed with time, including introducing the word dude several centuries too early. I mean, it was just so funny. The fact that he, you know, invents an electric guitar and introduced the word dude. I mean, it's it was hilarious to watch, and I really love that. And he reveals that he's going to have to leave today, but he wants to introduce a couple of his friends first, and he just seems very off. He's not acting like himself, and Clara can tell that, and Clara says he's acting odd, but the doctor says some days he wears a bow tie and others he wears a scarf and he says he's throwing a party and all of him is invited and that's that's true i mean the doctor is a very complicated man so i can understand what she's talking about but just in general he's acting like you know there's something he's hiding she's act, he's acting very suspicious and he definitely seems like he's trying he's hiding something from them you know you know what missy said he has this confession you can definitely tell that's on clara's mind and obviously the doctor's hiding something so the man with the axe, Bors appears, Bors appears to choke on a marble, and you know, the doctor's like, oh, don't chew on a marble, but the doctor then pulls a snake off of him, and a cloak figure appears, and he tells the doctor to come, and when he resists, the figure reveals himself as a large snake that's part of a colony of snakes, and the doctor agrees to go with him as long as no one else is harmed, and the snake reforms into a human, and then uh, into a humanoid, and the doctor asks why he'd want to talk to his archenemy, and... Missy takes some offense, and we see that this this uh, this snake man, that's what I'm going to call him because they didn't give him a name, he says that Davros knows and remembers and tosses a sonic screwdriver at the doctor's feet, and the doctor says he doesn't have a sonic screwdriver anymore. It doesn't work anymore, and Missy and Clara both notice shame on the doctor's face for the first time because they know that there's something he did, and basically he remembers Davros in the field of hand mines, he remembers leaving him there. So, obviously, this is probably the confession that he doesn't want to tell the Clara and Missy, that he just left him there, and definitely, he just doesn't want to tell them that because he knows it wasn't a good thing that he did, and uh, even Davros, you know, you shouldn't just leave someone in the middle of the field. He obviously feels really bad about this, and I thought this was definitely very interesting. So he's ready to leave with the snake man, and he says he knows this is a trap and says goodbye, and the snake man binds the doctor with a snake, and Missy and Clara offer to go with the doctor against his protest, and the snake man takes all three, and when they're gone, Bors throws back a curtain to reveal the TARDIS, and a Dalek stalk appears from his head. The Daleks move to procure the TARDIS, and basically... That was pretty intense. So the doctor explains Davros's history to Clara, calling him a child of war who grew up to create the Daleks. And I like how they did this because, of course, for people like me who hasn't seen Davros before, I like how they tried to explain what's been happening with Davros, you know, who he is, why we should be afraid of him, things like that, why he's the Doctor's enemy. And the Snake's Man ship brings him to something like a hospital floating in space, and the Snake Man comes for the Doctor. But before he goes, Clara points out that if the Doctor sends confession dial to Missy, he must have known that she wasn't dead, and she accuses him of lying. So... She clearly knows that there's something going on with the doctor, and she it has nothing to do with her. You know, that she just wasn't involved in. McClara tells him to make it up to her instead, hoping to, that guarantees that he comes back. But before he leaves, you can tell that the doctor doesn't plan on coming back. He has another agenda. And the doctor says gravity to Missy, and Missy explains to Clara that the gravity is strangely perfect here, not artificial. And Missy breaks free of her snake, jumps around a bit, implies that she might kill Clara by opening an airlock as she hits the button. And I love it. She's like, you know what? I'm just going to kill you. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, just because, you know, she's, she's so calm about it. You could say she's very threatening, but I just find Missy very, very funny in that way, and I definitely really like seeing that. So, the Snake Man brings the Doctor to Davros, and Davros approves of the Doctor's new face because it looks like his own, and that, I thought, was also very interesting. And the Doctor is still expecting a trap, and Davros re replays past encounters between himself and the Doctor, and they argue over whether Davros was right or wrong for creating the Daleks, and... Davros says it will end tonight, and I'm like, okay, and, and the Lord plays, and Davros says the Doctor's friends have gone exploring, and Missy then slowly walks out of airlock, and it looks like deep space, but there's ground and warmth and atmosphere, and they're on a planet, and the planet is visible, and as they stand out there, the invisibility effect fades, and they can all see they are on Scarrow, and everyone's freaking out, because this is the planet of the Daleks, and... 
obviously they're not safe here. They know what could happen to them, and it was awesome to see Daleks again, because I don't think we saw enough of them last year. We did see some Daleks last se series, but I don't think we saw enough of them. We didn't see them, you know, to the degree we saw them in this episode, and it was awesome to see some Daleks again. That was something I thought they did very well. So the Daleks usher Mish Missy and the Doctor into a room with the TARDIS, and they intend to just destroy the TARDIS right then and there. That's what their mission is here. They're going to destroy the TARDIS, and I'm like, oh shit, they're going to destroy the TARDIS. Keep in mind, this is a series premiere. This is not a season premiere. You know, this is this is a season premiere. This is not a season finale. That's why I think this episode is so crazy. And Missy explains the power of the TARDIS and how it could make the Daleks more powerful than ever before, and... The thing is, though, you really can't trust what Missy says, because even though, you know, she is working for them and trying to be good, she's not good, as she said. So you don't know really what she's trying to do here. So she talks about how they just need her, a Time Lord, to show them how it works. And basically, she's throwing herself into a trap at this point, and, do and the Doctor is obviously freaking out. He knows what could happen to her, and they just kill her right then and there. So Missy's dead. Miss Missy literally just died. That was crazy when that happened. So... The doctor begs for Clara's life, but Davro says he does not control them. Clara runs for the door, but she's shot down, and Clara is kids killed too. And I was freaking out when these two were killed, because obviously this is only a series premiere, and we have so much more time left in the series. There's 11 more episodes, and the doctor wonders why he ever let Davros live, because obviously that was his biggest fear. And now we know why he's so upset. He's not upset because he abandoned... Davros. That's not why he's upset. He's upset because he let him live and let him live to be this powerful figure that made these Daleks. And if he had not made those Daleks, then the Doctor, you know, if, if he wouldn't have lived, then the Doctor wouldn't be faced with this right now. Now this would happen. And Davros says compassion is the Doctor's weakness. And the Daleks then destroy the TARDIS and... That was insane when that happened. However, the doctor then remembers the boy again. The this time he has a Dalek's weapon, and uh, how he got there, we don't know. I think he's just picturing it, but he has the Dalek's weapon. He yells exterminate. He looks like he's about to kill Davros, and that's how the episode ends. And holy shit, was that an amazing ending. I thought that was an incredible ending, and I can't wait to see what's going to happen this season. It really seems like this season is going to experiment with this idea of this secret that the Doctor's keeping. There's something else. I feel like it's more than just him abandoning, um, you know, him not killing uh, Davros, he's gonna eventually have to tell them this. He's gonna have to tell them that he's the reason that Davros grew up to be powerful, and obviously, he's ashamed of it, but it seems like he's gonna basically be forced to tell them. Obviously, there's no way that Clara and Missy are gonna say that. There's no way. I mean, you can't have Doctor Who without Clara. You just can't. Maybe if they did that, that could be interesting, but you, you know that they're gonna live. I just know they're gonna live because... People would be too pissed if they killed Clara and Missy, and also, it's not a very good way for them to go out, so I know that they're gonna live, they're, they, you know, I don't know when they're gonna come back, but they, at some point they are gonna come back. I can't say they're gonna come back next week, I don't know if that's gonna happen, um, but I think it might, maybe it'll take them a while, we'll have to see, but that's gonna be very interesting, just the fact that they killed them in this episode... I find incredible that they did that, I love that they showed that, really, that's gonna be very interesting to see, um... What is the Doctor's connection to Missy? That's really what I want to know. Clearly, there's something going on between them that's a lot stronger than Clara suspected, because it seemed just like the Doctor and the Master are one. We've always kind of known that, that they're just as powerful as one another, but it just seems like there's more going on between them that we don't know about, and that's going to be very interesting as well to see what's going on with that. Um, the TARDIS seems to be destroyed, but there has to be a way to get back, because obviously the Doctor was about to kill Davros, and if he kills Davros, then probably this whole situation will be altered, and that's gonna be very interesting to see what happens there. Um, the Doctor's final day. I feel like this entire series is gonna take place in one day, because obviously this is the Doctor's final day. He's supposedly going to die, and we'll have to see what happens with that. Who's gonna die first? Is Davros gonna die first, or is the Doctor gonna die first? That's really what I want to know, is who is really gonna end up dying first here, because obviously... We know that Davros is dying. The Doctor is supposedly on his final day, so really, who knows what's going to come out of this. This can't end well either way. One of them is going to die for sure. That definitely is going to happen. Um, we'll have to see what ends up happening with that, because that's going to be very interesting. But what I loved about this episode is that, again, it felt like a series finale when it's a series premiere. And... I think that's pretty incredible the way they handled that, especially um, with the amazing finale we had last year. 
this was even more amazing. I found this to be an even more amazing than I was into it the whole time. Definitely, and I'm interested in seeing really what's going to happen there. Um, but it definitely is going to be interesting to see what this what happens in this season. Um, with that, definitely, it's going to be very interesting. Um, I guess the other thing I want to question is when Clara does live, because we know she's going to live. Do you think she maybe will try to do more? I feel like something bigger is going to happen with Clara, because obviously Missy says that she's kind of just the doctor's puppy and that is pretty much true that she is just the doctor's puppy but she still does have a very strong bond with the doctor which missy does have but clara has an even stronger bond that i don't think missy can break and i feel missy feels she can break it but we'll have to see what happens there now clara and missy maybe they're not dead maybe they went somewhere else i don't know what's gonna matter that's gonna be very interesting to see where they go um, but I really feel like what the doctor feels going to be easy, it's not going to be as easy. It seems like he's gonna, there's a lot more that's going to happen next week. I can't wait to see what ends up happening in next week's episode. It's going to be very intense. And like I said, especially for a series premiere, this really felt like a series finale. And I'm already very much into this season. It really feels like this season is going to break all of that, uh, you know, Let's go here with the TARDIS, because the TARDIS is destroyed now, so now they got to make a new TARDIS, and who knows how that's going to work. Knowing the Doctor, he probably can make a new TARDIS, just knowing what he can do. I could see him definitely making a new TARDIS, I could definitely see that happening, uh, but that could be very interesting as well. Because if he makes a new TARDIS, maybe some other things will be art altered. Maybe some things that happen with the TARDIS will be different. I don't know, I just feel like when Clara and Missy come back, a lot of things are going to be different, and that's going to be very interesting to see when they end up doing with that. I don't know how different things are going to be, but definitely I think there are going to be some very different outcomes that happen, and there are going to be some very interesting uh, scenarios that could take place, and that could be very interesting to see what ends up happening with that, and I'm, very, and I'm definitely going to be interested in seeing what they do um, with all this, because that could definitely be very interesting. Um, but overall, guys, I really, really love this season so far. I can't wait to see uh, where episode two goes. I mean, just what a great premiere. Seriously, again, this is only episode one, and it felt like we're, we've been in the middle of this season, because it kind of just feels like a direct continuation of series eight, which I'm completely fine with. I like that it's a direct continuation, because it's Jenna Coleman's last season. That's why I felt like, you know, some people said, oh, this is going to feel off. You know, it doesn't feel like this is a new series. I think it's because it's Jenna Coleman's last season that kind of got in the way. And it's not the writer's fault. It's simply just things that they thought were going to happen did not happen yet. You know, they we thought that Clara was leaving last season. Didn't happen. She's back. And she's leaving after this series. So, she's coming. She's leaving definitely after this. But... Now, uh, they're going to definitely make up for that, and that's going to be very interesting to see where that goes, but I can't wait to see what happens with this series. What happens in the next episode, I think, is anyone's guess. Honestly, what happens in this is, is anyone's guess. I don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen at this point, really. I mean, so much happens in this episode that really anything can happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm very intrigued to see what happens in the next episode. But let me know what you guys saw this premiere. I thought this was an incredible premiere. I can't wait to see what happens in the next episode, as I said. Um, but that's basically my review. Hope you all enjoy it. And I will see you guys in my next video, which I know I keep saying that's going to be for a blind spot, going to be for a blind spot. But the next video will absolutely be for the series premiere of Blind Spot. And I will see you guys for that. Okay, bye.